Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about propagation of these plants and these are wax begonias. Um, these are great plants. They're very common plants. They're great plants to have around the house. They're more of a bedding plant, shade, some sun, sometimes full sun. Uh, so these plants are just great. Under the right conditions they will do very well. They'll give you constant color uh, year round or at least <laughs> while you have the nice warm weather that at least we're dealing with here in southwest Florida. These plants are really easy to propagate and propagate just to mean means to make additional uh, copies. So you can propagate uh, wax begonia from cuttings, from seed pretty easily. The, for me, the easiest thing to do because of my background is propagate from uh, cuttings. Uh, my background is in the area of propagation. So I worked uh, in a propagation type laboratory, actually a biotechnology laboratory at a Midwest University for 35 years and then retired. And now I do mostly, I don't know if you can tell what's behind me, I do mostly orchids, but I like, I like all plants and I do propagation of most plants. Uh, begonias, these wax begonias are pretty simple to propagate and uh, they're also pretty inexpensive and we'll go over that soon in a, in a little bit um, but it's just a fun thing to do and a fun thing uh, to try. Um, what we do is we again propagate these from uh, cuttings of these plants. The, the plants themselves will will grow uh, pretty nicely. These I bought from the store. They're in pots. This is one I'll show you in a in a bit that I propagated myself from a uh, from a cutting. Uh, and they're they're pretty common plants, so you can get them everywhere. And once you can get plants that are like this or a decent site. I'm, I grow these in a garden in my front yard and they can get they can get kind of big for a bedding plant so they'll get maybe a foot uh, a little bit more than that tall um, but it's just a real nice splash of, co of color. Uh, the more commonly you'll see them in, uh, in red, they also have pink and white and a few things in between. I should also mention that these are wax begonias. So these are a certain type, they have a fibrous root system and there are other begonias that are, uh, that are a little different and that are called tuberous begonias. And those grow a little bit differently, they like a little bit more shade. Uh, and you can grow those from uh, leaf pieces and from stem pieces and from a lot of other, from a lot of different parts of the plant. There, there's a lot of flexibility with the tuberous begonias as far as how you propagate those. Those also come in a much greater variety of, uh, of colors and sizes and, and even the, the leaves, um, shapes and patterns on the leaves. Um, I should also mention that I'm, I'm located close to the Naples Botanical Garden, which has one of the largest collections of begonias in the United States. The other one, the other large uh, collection is housed by the Dallas Botanical Garden. So, um, and those are again mostly the uh, tuberous uh, begonias are uh, at that facility. All right? And these again are wax begonias. If you want more information about begonias in general, you can look at the America uh, Begonia Association. Uh, American Begonia Society, I'm sorry, <laughs> website, and there's just a lot of information on different begonias and how to grow them and, and things like that if you really, uh, really want to get into it. Okay, propagation of these plants is fairly, uh, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Um, what I like to do is, um, is propagation from cuttings. So you can take a cutting part of this plant or part of uh, this plant, you just take a shoot cutting and you have to remove most of all of the flowers and, and most of the leaves um, and dip them in a rooting powder and then place those in soil. And what you'll get is a pretty decent establishment of these plants. So let me, let me show you um, how I do that let me, and then I can show you some of the results that you'll get uh, from that. So I have right here 
I have some cuttings that I took from uh, the plants that I showed you previously that are in the front of my house. And these cuttings are, they came off of the plant, they're loaded with flowers, and if I'm going to take a cutting and let them sit for a little while, I'll put them in water. Um, these, I'm going to take cuttings and use these right away, and you certainly don't have to uh, have to do that. All right, so the cuttings from these plants, let me pull, let me pull them out. All the, all the flowers came off as I'm trying to pull them out. But it doesn't matter because we're gonna we're gonna we have to remove all the flowers anyway. All right, let me put a couple of these back in here. And what I normally like to do is put a um, a couple of cuttings in each pot. All right, so these are the these are the cuttings that I'll use. Uh, fairly small, but you need small cuttings. This is the best starting material when you do propagation of begonia as well as most plants. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to remove the flowers and and we're going to remove the leaves. But I want to show you a little bit about the medium that I'm going to use to root these in. And so what I like to use is the miracle Grow Moisture Control uh, Potting Mix. And this is what, over, over what I've, you know, I've done a lot of these, and this is just the, the best potting mix for propagation of these plants. You see some people that'll do this in sand or regular garden soil, but this is a soilless mix that contains really a, a number of different uh, materials, but the main reason I like it is because right here, moisture control. So moisture control means that there's these little particles that will absorb the moisture and that will release the moisture. So they, it stays, it, you have just a, a right amount of moisture in this mix. It's made so it, it's a little bit more expensive but miracle Grow, the miracle Grow brand is a really good brand for many of your potting soil and gardening uh, needs. Um, but this is, uh, again, this is what I strongly recommend. And the way that I do this, so I will, I've got one, one pot that I haven't done. So I go in here with another pot grab a bunch of the, the mix out. And you look in here and you can see perlite, you can see some of the other mixes, but you can also see the, and there's fertilizer in here also, so you don't need to fertilize here. But this is just really a light mix, and depending on where you buy it, sometimes there's a little moisture in it. But before I um, pot up, before I take the cuttings of these plants, I will always moisten this. I always add water to it. And you add enough so that it clearly drips out of the bottom of the pot. This is just water. Um, and again, what this mix does is it prevents overwatering and underwatering. So it, it's, it's wet, it's pretty moist, but it, it's, it contains about the right level of all the medium com components so that you'll get good rooting on this. The other reason that I like using this, um, the soilless mix is because when you plant these things, you know, these final established plants that you've successfully rooted, when you plant those out in your garden, they'll, you plant them, you just pull them out and you'll plant them in this soilless mix. And this provides, if your soil's too wet or too dry, this provides a good, um, a good starting block of soil that the plant is associated with. So you'll get better establishment of the plants if you use this to start it with. Uh, here I'm in Southwest Florida. There, this is a really sandy soil in this area. And this moisture control really helps in the establishment of plants in a dry, sandy soil here. Okay, so I have my wetted, soilless mix right here. The uh, potting mix and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make holes for these stems. You can use a pencil. I have, happen to be using a plant stake and you just go down in here and I'm making a couple of holes because I will put two plants and you can put however many plants you want in each, um, in each pot. Okay, so this is again our starting material. One other thing I should say is that we use, you can, you can just take this, this stem, the starting material, and place it directly in the potting mix. I like to use a rooting powder. And this is a garden safe take root. Uh, they say it's a rooting hormone, but the reality of this, if you're, if you're gonna pay attention to strict definitions, which is what I do as a plant scientist, um, this is not a hormone. This is what this contains is a growth regulator. And it contains a growth regulator, call, regulator called endobuteric 
acid. The hormone, hormones are naturally occurring and the hormone that the plants produce is acetic acid. So it is a, um, it, it's, it's similar to indolacetic acid, but it's endobutyric acid. And you use these synthetic um, hormones or growth regulators because they're not broken down by the natural degradatory machinery of the plant, so they stick around a little longer. Okay, what this hormone or growth regulator, oops, does is it induces root formation. Um, and you want it around a little bit longer so that you get good induction of root formation. It also inhibits root development but over time this growth regulator will break down and so it induces root formation then it breaks down and then you can then this plant the, the roots on this cutting will elongate all right so I really like to use a, um, a rooting powder for my cuttings really of all plants in order to get and this is a powder this is a um, you know this is a white powder and it'll stick, it'll stick to the stem, but only if it's if it's wet beforehand. All right, let's talk about preparation of the plant material. So these have flowers associated with this, and we're going to take all of these flowers off, even the small ones. They are, they're gone. Okay, this right now has three leaves on them, uh, on it, and I think that's one. Uh, too many, so I'm going to remove the leaves. What the leaves do is they, um, what the plant does normally is it uses the leaves and water evaporates from the leaves in a process called transpiration. And when that happens is it absorbs minerals and nutrients and water from the soil up through the plant as the water is transpiring from the leaves. When you take the roots off, when we cut, when we make a cutting, it's not as actively transpiring, so we, in order to protect the initial stem, we have to remove the leaves. So it's less of a shock when we only have a, right now we only have two leaves on this plant. So what I'll do is I'll take this stem, place it in the, in the water just to moisten it, and then when that happens, the, the rooting powder will stick better to the stem and that's shown right here all right so that's done I'm gonna I just push it in the soil firm the um, the soil around the roots and we're good second X plant right here we'll do the same thing this has a lot of flowers on it which means that the plants pretty happy okay so we'll do the same thing and again I'm gonna take off even the smallest flower any kind of drain on this stem is going to be a little bit of, a, of an issue. Dip this in the water so the rooting powder sticks and then you can see again the, uh, the rooting powder right here stuck on here. So we push it down, firm the soil around it and that's done. Okay, I'm going to do two more of these and then I'll take cuttings from this plant. Okay, so that was, that was the first two pots that I did. And now what I'm gonna do is take, uh, take a cutting, just two cuttings off of uh, these plants and do the same type of thing. And the way that, I mean, what you wanna do this is you wanna take a cutting so that you have, uh, it's usually good to have an, um, a, a node, which is where the, leaf attaches. It's good to have a node associated with it. So we're going to take this and this one. I'm looking at this. This leaf is really kind of big right here. So I'm just going to leave one leaf on this cutting. All right. And we're going to do the same type of thing. Put it down here, firm the soil around it. And let me get a cutting from this last plant here and what I do I should say when I make cuttings I try 
not to destroy the look of the plant too much. This is a small plant, so it's it's hard not to not to destroy it too much. But here, they're gonna go right here. There we go. That was a good one. All right, so we pull all the leaves and the flowers off of this. All right, dip it in the water so that the rooting powder sticks and we'll place it in here. Okay, and if you want to, so right now I have two different types of, uh, you know, these begonias. I have the red flowering one, uh, that's like this one, and then I have some pink flowering ones. Um, but what I'm gonna do is they'll probably be growing up and then flowering very soon. So what I do is I just water these cuttings in, and the idea behind this is to have the soil as it's wet, it kind of collapses around the cuttings. So this is um, this is what I have here. These look great. It does take um, a few weeks for these cuttings to form roots. So let's take a look at some results that I have with uh, with this one. And I should say, let's you know, I got to be honest here. I did these probably about a month ago. Um, I did the cuttings and some of them didn't fare very well. Um, some plants are really easy to propagate. I thought that begonia might be easy to propagate, but um, I, had, I had a little bit of a challenge this time with these plants and maybe because of the dryness. I should mention that right now I'm in Southwest Florida and it's warm and, and humid. So these pots, I just sit outside, they get irrigated with uh, just irrigation water three days a week, uh, which is fine. If you, you can do this inside your house, if you're in the Midwest United States or if you're other places or if it's dry, uh, you need to maintain, you need to put these plants under high humidity conditions. So you can put these um, in a tub, you can put a uh, bag around the top of it and then attach it with a rubber band just to maintain high humidity because these plants, they don't have any roots and they're stressed out a little bit um, until they grow roots and, and then they'll be, like I said, fine. So if you put something over the top of them, you gradually acclimate them to ambient humidity. If it's low right here in Southwest Florida, it is so humid that you don't need to do this. All right, back again, looking at the, at the results. This was done um, about, a, about a month ago. And this plant, normally what I do is I take this out and show you the roots, but um, begonias, they don't, the, the roots aren't really spreading out and hitting the, the outside of the pot, but this clearly, this was a cutting a month ago, and this is clearly the, the roots are, are out and it's doing uh, very well. So these are the results that you can expect, all right? Why do you do this? Well, you can get these plants for free. So yay, I, I'm very frugal. And once you make cuttings of these plants, neighbor's plants, or you buy one plant and make cuttings of it, then the rest of the plants that you get from it are free. It costs you the soil. I even use all my old pots over again. Um, but you get as many free plants as you want. Um, begonias are pretty economical plants to buy. Um, I have these plants, uh, the price tag, I got this from the big box store. I actually picked this up from Lowe's. The price on the plant says $1.98, which is really cheap, really economical, but I'm thrifty. And so when I was at Lowe's, they had these five for $5. So these plants, were a dollar each. And in that case, you kind of look at this and go, I mean, I'm really thrifty. I propagate my own plants, but these are a dollar each for big established plants. So, you know, come on, <laughs> you don't need to do this. Why should you do this? Well, I do it for fun. I just really enjoy propagating plants. I like getting free things. I like doing things on my own. And what I can do is just buy a few. Um, and even those are, even though these are really economical, they're really cheap, uh, you can get more of them for free. So this is, it's a great thing to do for fun. Just try to propagate uh, begonias or any other plant around your house. It's just, it's just a great, 
you know, it, for me, it's just a lot of fun, and it actually was a career for me in my early earlier days. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my video on propagation of wax begonia. If you did and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it, and happy propagating.